Maria brought misery and death to Dominica. The island still has no running water and is running low on food and supplies. The village of Pont Michel uh, was one of the worst hit areas. Our Michael Holmes traveled there and has this exclusive report. The drive between Dominica's capital, Roseau, and the coastal village of Pointe Michel usually takes no more than 10 minutes. After Hurricane Maria, getting between the two is to embark on an odyssey of hurricane carnage on foot. We've been told Pointe Michel was among the most badly hit areas of Dominica, and more people died in this community than any other. More than a dozen confirmed dead, many others missing. The foot traffic is constant, mostly out of Point Michel. Food is running low and people head to the capital to find what they can. We meet Germaine Fontaine on the way, leaving home because she no longer has one. I, I mean, we are homeless, but we are okay, we have life. But the entire home is gone, everything, every single thing I had in my house is gone. The closer you get to Point Michel, the more apocalyptic the scenes become. It is an assault on the senses. Here, a massive tree shoved into a house and blocking the way. During the storm, ravines and waterways became furious torrents, obliterating everything in their path. There's no running water on Dominica. These waterways are now the only way to bathe or wash clothes. The scale of this is just impossible to get your head around. This was the main road to Point Michel from the capital, and... I mean, just look at it. Along the main section of the road to Point Michel, the trees begin. Thousands of them, stripped even of their bark by Maria, piled high onto the road until they become the road. You don't walk to Point Michel, you climb and clamber. These are what's left of the once glorious rainforests, giants that stood perhaps for centuries thrown like matchsticks across the shoreline. The rainforests now just a memory. Once at Point Michel, we hear the stories of those who survived, like Miranda John. When I came back and I saw inside there, I just break down. So everything gone, the sea was right inside there. As we venture further into the community, we find Salma Francis, who insisted her mother leave her home next door to be with the family as Maria bore down. This is what remains of her mother's house. These are stories repeated throughout the village. We met Joan Frampton further along the road, born and raised in Point Michelle, still stunned at the ferocity of what she and her family lived through. I was so scared, scared, because first time I ever experienced a thing like that. I saw Hurricane David, I saw many other hurricanes, not like this one. Like it was non-stop, it didn't want to stop. It came with a vengeance, and it just come out not to play, but to destroy. And destroy, Maria did. Three houses vanished from this part of the village. Thirteen people are still missing, but two bodies were found, including a ten-year-old boy. They lie in Point Michelle's tiny cemetery, the freshly turned earth and a hastily constructed cross, marking just two of the victims of Hurricane Maria. Michael Holmes, CNN, Point Michelle, Dominica. Wow. And I always remember CNN.com.